Hello and welcome to Unprofessional Engineering. My name is James. And you got Luke. Luke, we are going to be looking at part two of our How It's Made series Ooh. on toys. I love me some toys oh and my How gosh. It's Made. The last one performing very well. I think, I think How It's Made is interesting. When you make it How It's Made and it's toys. Yeah, you can't I, beat that. Yeah, it's a winning combination. It really is. It's kind of like you and I. A winning combination. Right. Nice. Well done. All right, so the first toy we're going to be looking at is very iconic, I would say. Stretch Armstrong. Oh, I love now talk so about an engineering marvel. Marvel. <laughs> marvel. Let's go with a brief history of old Stretch. How about okay. that? And we all know him. He's like the blonde guy, hulky guy. He like, looks like Hulk Hogan. In like underwear, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Good guy. Created by Jesse D. Horowitz and approved by his boss, James Kuhn, at Kenner and produced by Kenner, 76 through 1980. That's a, that's a name you don't hear anymore. I remember when I was growing up, Kenner was like, everybody had Kenner toys. Well, actually, my next statement, my next thing written here. Okay. Gobble, gobbled up by Hasbro. Oh. Just like all toys. Hasbro. Hasbro the takes man. everything and then turns it into Monopoly. The man. That's basically what they do. The man, yeah. They originally wanted two bodies, a muscular one, the guy that we know, and a sumo wrestler. So kind of going the opposite direction on that one. The sumo wrestler was too bulky, so they didn't pursue it. Okay. They wanted to use, originally, springs for the stretching. And okay. That, the springs would then, you know, elongate and go back to normal. That's okay. their original idea. But they would pierce the skin that is on there, and they were kind of awkwardly stiff. So they might yeah. stretch, but they wouldn't really bend like yeah, and like the Yeah, and like the skin on the outside would go like inside the spring and would yeah. look weird. Yeah. Fortunately, though, James Kuhn was a chemical engineer. He might still be one. I don't know. A chemical engineer, and he was able to come up with a corn syrup substance, and that's what we now know and love with Stretch Armstrong. It's so he's corn filled with based. corn syrup? Yeah, and other goodness. Yeah, it's got to be something that makes it a little bit thicker than corn syrup. Yeah, we'll, we'll get into that later on here. Okay. Uh, let's see. Stretch was reissued in the 1990s by Cap Toys, along with Fetch Armstrong, fetch? which was a dog. Oh, uh, I got gotcha. it. Stretch and Fetch. And then his brother, this name's terrible, Evil X-Ray Wretch Armstrong. I feel like they're really just... <sighs> reaching. They're it's stretching a, on they're that stretching one. They're stretching on that one. It's, it, yeah. <laughs> so this is interesting. In 94, Disney bought the rights to the character Stretch Armstrong and wanted to make a movie featuring, of course, Tim Allen as Stretch because this was probably during the Santa Claus yeah, craze, yep, yep. and it never happened, and so Hasbro bought up the rights. In 2008, Universal wanted to run with the idea, but it was dropped repeatedly by different groups, and now we're likely never, never to see this cinematic masterpiece, well, I'm sure. I, speaking of stretch, that movie Fantastic Four, which was horrible. It really... Had a guy like Stretch or aren't like the the one doctor guy, I forget what his name is, he is a stretchy guy. And that movie from what I didn't even see all of it. I saw parts of it and it is horrible. Fantastic four. So I'm I'm pretty nerdy, you know that. No. Uh, <laughs> I I've read a lot about the Fantastic Four franchise and with all the X-Men mm -hmm. stuff and Marvel and DC things, Fantastic Four kind of gets left behind because it's kind of in this strange legal battle mm -hmm. as to who has the rights to doing it and like Marvel doesn't have it so it's not in their universe. It's very strange. You guys should look that up okay. though. Okay. Uh, anyways, so no cinematic masterpiece movie coming out, but apparently next Netflix has reached a deal for a full 26-episode animated series based on Stretch Armstrong. And you know, Netflix will basically make a show about anything at yes, this point. Yes, they will. And it's supposed to be out in 2017, but I don't think. Uh, will Wheaton. Uh, you know Will Wheaton? Yeah, yeah. He's uh, the... Big Bang Theory he's as the, well the, as the Star Trek. The guy that was on Star Trek. Yeah. Uh, he's one of the names that I recognize from the voiceover. Okay. So it's basically, like, I watched a teaser of it. It's very much like Teen Titans. If oh, you've ever okay. seen that cartoon yep, yep. with, like, young Robin and things like I'm that. I'm with you. It's kind of that style. So anyways, not only is Stretch, like, the blonde dude stretching around, there are an estimated 67 other varieties of Stretch. Okay. So here's some rare ones. The Hulk was made and they assume or they figure out that 15 to 27 are left. Also, these guys are very collectible. You mean like the Green Hulk or Hulk Hogan? Green Hulk. Green Hulk, okay. Stretch Serpent, it's a snake, mm. a green snake, three or four of them left. Elastic Batman, four are left. In 2006, one of them sold for $15,000. That's crazy. Uh, there was one in Japan only. There's about 10 to 25 left. My favorite, 
El Hombre Elastico. There are Ooh. one to four left. And some other notables would be Superman, Mickey Mouse, Donald Duck, Flintstones, many others. Did you have a Stretch Armstrong growing up? I did not, no. I, I, I think I did, but I, I'm not 100% sure. So the production of Stretch, very interesting. Die casting was used to create aluminum mandrels. Investment casting was used to make ceramic ones. Okay. Okay, so there were two different options. Both casts were used, but since ceramic was much more detailed, some of the stretch figures were better looking than other ones. So it's kind of weird that they didn't just pick the best process. Yeah. They made kind of crappier ones and kind of better ones. Okay. But since die casting for aluminum molds only took two to three minutes, it was better for mass production of the figures. Ah. The, the mandrels were then coated in a talc powder to help release as he gets filled up. Mm -hmm. uh, they're dipped into uncured latex for two minutes, so that thin uh, skin thickness of 0 0.02 or so hundredths of an inch is layered. But fun fact, some of the Stretch Armstrongs didn't go through the dipping process, okay. and so they don't actually have that shiny skin like most of them. Then what would it be? Just like... It's just the pure uh, formula the, oh, that we're about okay. to talk about. Yeah. So what's the goo inside? Yeah, of what's them? the goo? Like That's that the makes them stretchy. The, the miracle stuff. It's designed not to dissolve, decay, or destroy the latex skin that they put down. The corn syrup mix was made up of nine percent dextrose, ten percent maltose, twelve percent mel mitriose, and meltri mel mel meltriose, and sixty-nine percent higher saccharides. So, so you could basically eat. Yeah. It sounds like a bunch of sugar and food additives. Yeah, basically. Okay. That's what it comes okay. down to. But there are a few other things like some white lime, glass uh, with particle size of 50 microns or less, grum, gum, resin, wood, flour, <laughs> pine pitch, and talc are also added to increase the weight and the volume okay. of the material that they're making. So th th those, are, th those would be fillers probably. They're fillers. Gotcha. Yeah. And so then they heat up this kind of gross mixture, I would say, and they shoot that thing on in there, and it helps reduce moisture in them and increases Stretch's longevity. Okay. So they then they slap the head on there, and Stretch is good to go. I like that. Yeah. Three fun facts for you before shoot. you get into your first one. I know I'm running a little You long, are right. I, I was, was, was kind of cool. I'm kind of giving you the stink eye. I know. So you can buy a Stretch Rejuvenator. Rejuvenator? Yeah, it's like a little bottle. So for your figures that have dry rot or discoloring oh, the from latex. UV rays, gotcha. you can like reapply. Originally, 40,000 Stretch Armstrongs were made in the U.S. Now only two to 300 in any condition remain of the originals. Fun fact number three, 15 inches long to start, but can stretch to four or five feet. If a tear happens, you can buy an adhesive bandage to fix him. Interesting. Yeah. So I, I know I plowed through that, but super cool. All the different ones that are out there, the stretching, the stuff that goes in them. Because, I mean, you can see videos of people yeah. cutting them open. Like it's just a cool materials kind of experiment. I like that one. Yeah. I was really excited. You can tell I'm excited. I, you're very excited. So go ahead. I'm okay. sorry. Next. So next up what are is... We looking at? Um, do you want me to sing it? Yes. Okay. It's slinky. <laughs> it's slinky. It's fun. It's a wonderful toy. It's fun it's for slinky. a girl and a boy. It's slinky. It's fun, fun for a girl and a boy. And a boy. Okay. So in case you didn't know, mine non -gender is... Non-gender specific. Yes, non-gender specific. In case you didn't know, I'm talking about slinkies. Uh, so just a couple interesting facts about slinkies. Guess how many feet they are. Not coiled, but the original piece of spring steel. Guess how many feet it is. 21. 62 feet of spring steel, and there's Impressive. roughly 80 coils per slinky. The slinky was invented in 1943 by a cat by the name of Richard James. One of those people with the, f the double two first, first names. names. I don't it's like weird, that either. I don't, I and then you forget, like, when am I talking about Richard or James? So, you can't respect someone like that. Yeah, I wasn't thinking you could. <laughs> uh, by Richard James, he was a mechanical engineer working in Philadelphia, and he was actually working. There's so much Another stuff happens. Another PA in, toy. Tons of PA yeah, connection just here. just like crayons. So, crayons. Oh, my goodness, <laughs> I'm going to punch you right in the face if you say crayons. <laughs> so, um, so he was actually working on uh, stabilization equipment for um, – 
the the Navy. So really sensitive equipment wow. inside of a ship needs to be balanced so it doesn't bounce around. Mm-hmm. And the story goes that when he was in his shop working on these springs for this like electronic equipment, he bumped the spring and it started falling over a book and he was like, "Oh my goodness, look at what that did." And That's uh, what I would do. That's exactly what I would do. So he runs back to his wife at home and tells her, hey, you got to see this thing. And he shows it to her. And then it's iteration, iteration, iteration. He finally gets this spring that'll fall end over end, that'll go back to its original shape. Um, and it's interesting because his wife, Betty, who is was actually instrumental in the company. There's okay, yeah. an interesting fun fact here at the end about her. Um, she's the one that actually named it Slinky. So Slinky is a real word. So if you go to Merriam-Webster... And you look up Slinky, it actually means stealthily quiet and f- in a flowing manner. Well, there we go. That's I didn't a good realize name, I, thought, I thought it was a name of a toy. I didn't realize it was an actual I word. I did not know either. Um, Can I interrupt you real quick shoot. for a word from our sponsor? We have We're going to do it very fast. This okay. week. It is not Hasbro, as we already called them the devil. But if you do want to tell us other toys to research, other topics to look at, tell us we're great looking or anything else, uh, email us at unprofessionalengineering at gmail.com. If you subscribe, we'll send you some great stickers. Also, review us on iTunes. Those are always helpful. We love the Please reviews. Please review us. Please. If you listen to us, just go online and review us. It'll be great. And that's it, because I wasted so much time before. And go. Okay, good. Um, so, uh... So he, he invents the Slinky, he, he, he tries selling it and marketing it, it doesn't do that great. And then what he does, in 1945, he sets up in a Gimbel store in downtown Gimbel's. Philadelphia. Gimbel's. You remember Gimbel's? They're out remember? of business, right? They are. Yeah. Uh, he sets up in Gimbel's, and he convinced the manager of the Gimbel's in Philadelphia to let him put an inclined plane in the store to demonstrate how these, because like when, that you're, look, was that. when you're looking yeah. at this thing in a box, like what do you do with it? So he basically sets it up and he demonstrates how it works. Literally in 90 minutes, they sell out of every <laughs> slinky they have. Awesome. And kids just went totally crazy. And then in 19, so that was 1945. In 1946, he took it to uh, the American Toy Fair and the rest is history. Um, so interesting I'm, thing. Good. I'm glad he was doing his part during the war to produce slinkies to keep everyone's morale up at home. He was. That he was, was good. Uh, so interesting. Uh, the slinky follows the basic principles of hoax law. If hoax you don't, law? hoax law, hoax law. Um, if you don't know what that is, uh, it's basically force and compression over a given distance. You can look it up for yourself. Uh, and at some point, it can't compress anymore. Uh, and at another point, it can't deform anymore or it goes past permanent deformation. And a slinky operates in between that total compression and total deformation. And that's why slinkies kind of go back and forth and wow. can drop down Look steps. that engineering. Also, uh, that's basically the basis of finite element analysis. It is. Yeah, just doing that equation over and over, over again. Over and over again in really small areas. Right. Um, so his wife actually came up with the idea for the song that you know Mm -hmm. uh, that I just sang. She's pretty good. She's really good. Um, So did you have Slinkies growing up? I did. Now, are you a metal Slinky or a plastic Slinky? Uh, I liked the colors of the plastic Slinkies. Not that you would know about that. but Uh, Yeah, I've never even seen a plastic Slinky. Oh, really? But the metal ones, of course, are better. Yeah, they sound better when you move them. They sound great. Oh, I love the sound. So, so here's. Though I hate when they get tangled together. Or they get rusty uh, if they're old. Well, yeah. So here's an interesting fact. Uh, so James's wife, she's she was the the workhorse of the corporation here. So I in, thought you were talking about mine. No, no, <laughs> it's no. Like it's true. No, but. no, no. Uh, <laughs> no, Richard James. I keep oh, on saying it wrong. Yeah. So Richard James's wife. Uh, in 1960, Richard de- Richard decided he was going to join a religious cult in Bolivia. And he said to his wife and kids, you're free to come with me or you can stay here. Thankfully, uh, his wife Betty decided to stay in Pennsylvania. Uh, she moved the, uh, the factory to Hollidaysburg, Pennsylvania, oh, where neat. it remains today. Uh, and she actually ran the company um, up until it was sold in, 
and, and another company bought it. Uh, but every Slinky, the Slinky brand that you see is made in Hollidaysburg, Pennsylvania. They also make the plastic ones, uh, but there's a lot of knockoffs. Um, but yeah, so I'm glad she decided to stay. That was nice of her. And I do thought, that. I thought you were going to say every Slinky sold, 10% of the proceeds go, go to, to some Bolivian religious cult, cult in Bolivia. Yeah. No, no. So. <laughs> Uh, interesting. Yeah, Good for very her. interesting. I'm glad that she stuck around. So that's the Slinky, and I, I, I love loved that. Slinkies. Probably my face. So were you a down the step Slinky, I was. or were you just a hands? I was a down the step. Okay. Slinky. See me. I was. I was a hands, and then what I would do with my you're Slinky. Lazy. I am. I would actually hang it on stuff, and I would get my GI and my GI Joe guys, and they would use it as like a ladder. Oh, um, you're very creative. Some other interesting things, slinkies. So in Vietnam, uh, slinkies have an amazing way of uh, helping with um, transmission of audio equipment. So what they would do is whenever they were using their radios in Vietnam, they had these big, long, skinny antennas. They'd actually take a slinky and they would stretch it over the antenna to increase the oh, um, the distance yeah. and the signal strength uh, using a slinky. Makes sense. So, Very cool. Yeah. I think before we go on to our other two toys, yes. we should take a break for this week's Luke's terrible engineering. Yeah. So th th terrible invention. Terrible engineering. Well, yeah, terrible engineering toy edition, and I'm not sure if this is a toy or not. And James actually sort of. brought this one up to me. One of I, our customers actually, not customers, one of our uh, customers, listeners actually emailed it, it in. And he emailed it in, and, and I saw this before, and I thought it was stupid, and I forgot about it. And then you re-reminded me yes. how stupid it is. So again, we're kind of dogging on cat lovers oh, a little bit. Dogging on cats. Dogging on cat lovers a little bit. Uh, so th you've seen the video on Facebook, I'm sure. And what it is, is it's a silicone, silicone tongue that you put under your mouth. So uh, imagine a mouthpiece with a big bent silicone tongue sticking out of I'm it. I'm imagining it. It's horrible. It just, is. Just looking at it is, is horrible. And what you do is you hold this mouthpiece, you bite down on it, and this big silicone tongue sticks out of your tongue and you pretend that you groom your cat. Mm -hmm. And the theory that these crazy cat lovers have is that's how cats show affection, it's how cats interact with each other, it's how they engage socially with one another, and that's how you can connect with your cat is by grooming your cat with a giant fake silicone tongue. Google it. It's it's it, it's worth the uh, the watch the watch, but it is it's the stupidest thing I've ever seen, and I'm not going to say the name of the person, but the guy in the video looks identical to one of our coworkers. Really? Yeah. Interesting. I'll have to watch again. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so let's wrap that up and just end with: if you think it's not a stupid idea, we don't want you as a listener. So <laughs> there's that. There goes I our put cat. That out there, there goes our cat lover uh, audience. <laughs> All right. So the okay. next toy we're going to look at is the Super Soaker. And try to make this one a little quicker than the last I'm one. I'm so sorry that I talked so yeah, much. You killed that. Yeah, one. Super Soaker. Not really cool about how it's made, but the history yeah, very it's plastic, interesting. Right? So I like the way that iSoaker.com wrote this up. The year 1989 began the water weaponry revolution. It's very, very like awesome, like dramatic. I like that. So it really starts in '82, which happens to be the best year ever because yours truly was born that year. Oh. So, look yay, you shout out to look me. Look you all grown up now. Barely. Dr. Loney Johnson, a nuclear engineer working for the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, was working on a heat pump that used water instead of Freon. And he basically hooked up this pump to his uh, bathroom sink okay. and started shooting the water out at like an amazing rate. And he's like, man, that would make an awesome water gun because he probably was... Like, I don't know, the second born and always getting picked on by his brother. So he was making a great weapon. I feel like you're, there's some that part might unresolved not be, issues but, going yeah. on there. <laughs> Sorry, Greg. Anyways, uh, since making this stuff is expensive, he wanted to get a licensing agreement. He tried with Daisy, who made uh, air-powered BB guns. BB guns. You remember The those? Red Rider. They're, wow. With was a, it, was, with, were with they the compass, Red Rider? compass on the stock. I don't know if it is or not. But oh, okay. BB gun. So they were struggling, so he uh, didn't go there. But he went to Entertech, which he pitched them a water-propelled airplane and a vibrating machine gun. So not even the water okay, gun. Okay, he's still not and there. And so as he's doing that, he, in passing, mentions how he has an air-powered squirt gun that would be way better than the crappy battery-powered one that they have. And they're like, all right, we'll give you a contract for these other two toys, but we want to see the squirt gun first. 
and of course they're blown away with it. But unfortunately, more trouble happens, so Entertech goes out of business in 89, Water Gun's never made, he keeps working on it, he okay. improves it, where he goes to Laramie and pitches the gun, and they're like, wow! That's what they said, is wow! Wow, just like that? Yep, and by 1990 they were producing the Power Drencher Super Soaker 50, so like the little handheld first version mm -hmm. one. 18 total patents went into this thing, into one water gun. So just some big history things. 93, the Super Soaker MDS, multi-directional soaker, is, arrives. You can shoot around corners and stuff. Very okay. cool. 96, the CPS, the constant pressure system, which we'll talk about in a second, uh, improves the water pressure to the point that uh, they release the CPS 2000. It's so powerful that it needs to be removed from the market and like redone. That's wow. how strong it's shooting water. I wish I got my hands on one of those. Again in 2002, our friends at Hasbro and Golf <sighs> Lar Laramie. And so they take over the Super Soaker. In 2009, it was the 2000th anniversary, so they re-released the Super Soaker SS50, the original handgun. Okay. Um, did you have Super Soakers growing up? I did, yes. I had lots of Super, so yeah. super Soakers. Yeah, they were great. 2013, last date in history, Loney Johnson and his company, Loney Johnson something or yeah, He started other, doing this on his own, right? Yeah, uh, was awarded $73 million following a dispute with Hasbro over unpaid or underpaid royalties from 2007 to 2012. <sighs> That's just over that five-year span. That's crazy. Just imagine how much money they made off the other stuff. So real quick how it works, the original guns are all based off of a pump mechanism which builds up water pressure, and by pumping air into the reservoir, you can then blast your friends with more power. The harder you pump it, the more air pressure you okay. have. So later on, they changed that so that you have a system that pumps from water from one reservoir into another one, again, compressing the air, but okay. providing more water as well, so you can shoot more powerful. Uh, let's see, there's something called the leak level, which happens if the pressure is exceeding the structural integrity of the gun. Okay. So basically like the plastic and the springs that are involved. So the strength of the metal spring that's holding the trigger down is what determines this. Okay. The more rigid, the higher your pressure can be. The CPS, the one that became illegal, I guess we'll say, <laughs> uh, works on a bladder system where you pump water into it and it expands this rubbery substance, kind of like a balloon. Okay. And then when you pull the trigger, that balloon wants to go back to its original shape, so it just blasts Gives you a this extra stuff out. Oomph. So you get a little extra juice going on. So that was pretty cool. And that's that's basically all I really want to say about the Super Soaker. Uh, the I CPS love is the awesome. Super Soakers. Have you seen the ones where you wear like the backpack and like blast people down? Yeah, and stuff? the thing that I I like them, but I'm also a big fan of just the little ones that you can't see. You put in your hand, you just oh, like walk up attack. to your buddy and just pew, pew, pew. And you... I'm a water balloon guy myself. Yeah. We found these cool things this summer where you hook them up to a hose and like a hundred balloons oh, will fill all at once. And, and, they tie. and they tie themselves. Nuts. I did see Nuts that. So. Yeah. yeah. I feel all like right. We should invent something like that. We should invent something. Okay. My last one. I, I was I was concerned that I wouldn't like this one much, but is Silly Putty. And this oh, ended silly up being... Silly Putty seems great. This ended up being so cool. Uh, I'm all about the materials, you know? Yeah, so... And it also helps that my daughter right now, she is so, so into making slime right now. Like, literally, she will sit there for hours and make slime. Really? And slime and Silly Putty are very, very similar in, you know, how they're made, the materials that go into them. Sure, that makes sense. Um... So she was super excited that I was doing this silly. Did putty you pass episode. all this by her then? She uh, I did. I did. She, all right. She 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 approved. So uh, so silly putty was actually originally developed as a rubber substitute during World War II, and what was happening was Japan was expanding its influence uh, in the Pacific Rim, and all of the islands where we would get natural like rubber, rubber from, trees. they were taking over, so we could no longer you know, have rubber to make tires and all the other rubber materials that we had in the time. Two things. One, I think we talked about Silly Putty a little bit in our top 10 toys conversation. But amazing, again, how much World War II influenced they the influenced creation of, of so stuff. much. A lot of stuff. Uh, so the interesting thing about Silly Putty, uh, so what happened was the, the, the government was like, you know what, there's a rubber shortage. You have to recycle. You can't. You can't go crazy using rubber. We're going to run out. We need it for the war effort. Right. Um, so uh, what happened was um, 
this this guy was working on a rubber substitute. And just a little background on what silly putty is. Uh, so silly putty is a non-Newtonian uh, oh, material. Love throwing that word uh, around. And basically, what this means is so materials. You know, liquids are either Newtonian or non-Newtonian. And Newtonian means it follows Newton's laws of, you know, whatever he's... I can't remember the specific names of the laws. That's a Newtonian material. Like, water is a Newtonian material. Uh, A non-Newtonian material means it acts differently depending on how you interact with it. And Silly Putty, in particular, reacts to speed, for lack of a better way of doing it. So Silly Putty, for example, if you take a piece of Silly Putty and you hit it extremely hard and extremely fast, it will shatter like glass. I never do that. Wow. But if you do it slowly, we all know what happens with Silly Putty. You just make a fingerprint. Or if you leave Silly Putty sit on a table long enough, it'll eventually pool. I feel like we need to make a video doing this, shattering it. Yeah, it's got to be extremely fast and extremely hard. With a hard. hammer or like a machine? I, I was unable to find a video, but I'm told theoretically because it's non-Newtonian. Okay. Because All it's right. a non-Newtonian material. Um, and and you've seen those videos where they make those giant cornstarch right. pools. That's another example of non-Newtonian. If you stand in it, you sink. If you're running it, you go right across. So that's another non-Newtonian thing. I feel like non-Newtonian could be a whole episode. Or Newtonian versus non. You could. It could. Uh, so because of Silly Putty's physical properties, uh, it wasn't a, uh, a suitable um, replacement for rubber. rubber. And, and basically, they had no idea what to do with it. They knew they wanted to do something with it, but they just, they just weren't sure. Okay. Uh, so most people agree, and there's some dispute here, uh, that a guy by the name of James Wright... There's a lot of people named James, James that are going really on. successful. And then there's... I am just dropping the ball. And then there's you. Uh, most people uh, agree that he was the original inventor in 1943. Uh, some people say um, that there were some other folks, but uh, it's while he was working at Dow Corning. Oh. Um, uh, so, regardless. Dow Corning? Like the Corning glass? Yeah. Yeah. And Dow Chemical, perhaps? Yes. Interesting. Okay. Sorry. So, uh, so it seemed to have like no practical use. So, what ended up happening with Silly Putty was. They were like, this, this is literally the way I read all these different stories, and I got a bunch of different resources basically citing this, is it became like a party gimmick. Like, these scientists would go to, like, cocktail parties, because that's what you did back in, you know, um, you know the 50s. Is you just go, go to, to cocktail parties and you would just show up with a silly and, 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 and everybody loved playing with the silly party. The, the adults at these parties, like, this is amazing. So uh, there was a lady by the name of Ruth Fall. Gather? Oh, uh, Ruth Fallgather. Yeah. yeah, yeah, good old Ruth. Yep. Uh, Ruthie. She, yeah, she came across the material uh, and decided that she wanted to sell it um, in uh, a toy catalog uh, that he owned. Makes sense. So um, it really didn't start taking off. Uh, and then all of a sudden, in 1950, uh, it appeared in the New Yorker um, in one of their, you know, toy episodes or articles that they were writing about Christmas toys. And then it showed up on the Howdy Doody show in 1956. And next thing you know, Silly Putty was all the rage. On the Uh, Howdy Doody show. That's pretty much what made it. Well, it was between that and the New Yorker, those two things. So between 1950 and 1957, those two events really made... Silly putty, a thing. You're too young for the Howdy Doody show, um, right? Wait, I mean, I've seen like reruns, reruns of it. Yeah, yeah, I've, I've never seen even seen it. it. So, um, so Crayola bought the rights to this, and I love Crayola. Another Pennsylvania. Crayola makes what? Uh, uh, I think they make crayons. 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 Okay, good. Um, another Pennsylvania. Company. Another Pennsylvania company. So they bought the rights to Silly Putty back in 1977, and they sell. Guess how many eggs per year? And don't look at my screen. <sighs> 19 million. Six million eggs per year. Now, that's just the Silly Putty brand. Brand, There's all types of knockoffs and whatnot. Right. Um, So, uh, how much time we got? Not much. Not much. Okay, so I'll wrap it up with how you can make your own Silly Putty if you want to try this at home. This sounds like a great activity. It is. So, Silly Putty is basically borax and 
that that's the number one ingredient. Doesn't borax yeah. sound like it should be toxic? It is, but you can like buy it at the dollar store in a box. You know, my daughter and I have I have borax all over my house because that's all my daughter wants to do because it's slime. <laughs> it's a key component in slime. <laughs> So here, so here's how. If you want to make some silly putty, now if you do, do this recipe, it actually behaves more like silly putty than slime. Because okay. my daughter's into slime, not silly putty. Uh, so you basically take one tablespoon of borax. You can pick it up at you know the dollar store. Single tablespoon of borax, four cups of room temperature water, and you stir it. And what's going to happen is all the borax isn't going to uh, absorb because it's it, it, you'll see borax at the bottom of this so you're gonna you're Seems gonna basically fine. stir that um, and then you take just Elmer's glue school glue white school glue and you squeeze it into the water and you got to do it fast enough so you got to do it from a height so it hit water it, it'll float if you don't do it it has to go into the water so you got to make sure you squeeze it in and it's however much you want to make if you want to make a little bit of Silly putty, you just do a little bit. If you want to make a big thing of silly putty, and then you stir it and stir it and stir it, and what happens is the glue interacts with the borax, and it creates this kind of nasty little, like, ball of slime. And then you basically just work it and work it and work it, take it out of the water, squeeze the excess water out, roll it, massage it, roll it, roll it, roll it, and eventually it will behave almost identical to silly putty. Wow. Then you don't have to spend the $1.99 on an egg for you all of it. You just got to buy five, $5 worth of borax yeah. that'll sit underneath your sink for the next seven years. Nice. So so if you want to make slime at home, uh, and I'm going to... Or I, silly I, putty. I meant, I'm, I'm, yeah, or, or silly putty. Uh, I meant to try this at home, and I, I, I didn't try it. That but could be another video we make. I have... My, for our video series. The amount of slime I have at the house is... It's, it's ridiculous. I, I I, I, I've, it. I've spent probably hundreds of dollars on slime supplies. Wow. Hundreds. I'm glad you make so much money. Do you remember, before we end, Nickelodeon Gak? It was basically slime. Yeah, I do. I think they had they had foam or something like that, too. It was like a, a foamy, slimy substance. Yeah, so my daughter makes foam, and yeah. it's slime that they put foam, foam beads in. in. Yeah. An interesting story, again, before we end. Uh -huh. uh, she decides to play with a slime. In, and this is a, another public service announcement to all your parents out there. Don't let your kids play with a slime in the bathroom sink even oh, no. so she's playing with the slime she had the 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 trap closed right she had the little stick up like so, a good kid kept her yeah, trap closed yeah exactly um but apparently she decided to let these foam beads go down the sink at some point in time and i'm about a week in and i've snaked it i've drainoed it i've done the organic green powder you put on there to clear the drain and i cannot clear this drain if anyone has drain clearing suggestions email us at unprofessional engineering that's the only reason why i wanted to do today's show is wow. to get that it's it's I, i've literally i cannot get rid of the wow. phloem that's in the sink i'm sorry to hear that yeah at least it's not in the carpet yeah but this is i really and i have a new appreciation for silly putty now awesome this was a great episode i love the how it's made and i love toys so this is amazing yeah I'm sure this will be another hit. I'm sure it will be. We'll probably have a sponsor next episode. Exactly. I'm, th right. I'm thinking. I'm thinking Crayola crayons. Crayons or Hasbro. Yeah. All right. Well, until next time, Luke. See ya.